514. Let's sing the first, third, and fourth verses. 514. <coughs> I would uh, love you to sing for you sometime, but y'all would consider that very special, trust me. Uh, I want to welcome you all this morning. Uh, Stephen and Stacy and his family are visiting with family up in the mountains. They haven't been able to be with in quite a while, and uh, they will be back uh, real soon. Uh, and so we, our prayers are with them, and he already texted this morning to tell me to tell you all howdy, and if he was here, uh, I'm sure he would express the same. Um, while you're <coughs> walking into the sermon here, if you'll turn to the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. And if I'm too loud, give me a high sign and, and Amy will crank me down. She wishes Sounds good. She wishes uh, she could do that at home, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, you know, we've mentioned quite a bit about the other night at uh, our men's prayer group uh, about uh, what Larry came up with for us. And he can't tell where he got it either, but the Lord wanted him to share it. And uh, that's going from survival to revival. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today, but I'm gonna focus on uh, where Jeremiah was talking about the sins of Judah, that they went away from God. <laughs> Uh, they were no longer a Christian nation, and then his prayer for deliverance. And uh, I think we can see the same in our nation today, and I think we can also uh, 
pray those things in prayer as he did. So let us pray. Dearly Father, you've given us a beautiful morning. You've given us a beautiful church full of people who love you. We pray, dear Lord, that the words you've given will instill in people's hearts, but most of all, that they'll accept your son as their savior and that he will indwell them, that he will live within them and help them to walk as you have them to walk so we can be a light to a world that is ever full of darkness. Dear Lord, we love you and we thank you for all that you've done and most of all for sending your son. Jesus Christ, the Lord, precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, you know, I've heard preachers talk about for a long time, where do you start the revival? And um, Don, as Marion said, if you would go out in the yard with that stick she keeps you in line with and draw a circle around your feet, that's where revival needs to start. Uh, but I also came to realize as I was studying that survival starts there. And the difference is survival is us getting within that circle and pulling everything we can in just to make it. And revival is us being in the same circle and working out. Because that's the Great Commission. Uh, God told us to go. He didn't tell us to just stay in one place. He didn't tell us to try to maintain. He wants us to go and disciple everyone to reach them with his love and with the sacrifice of Christ, who could be no more <coughs> of a sacrifice or no bigger of a commitment than that is. Now, uh, as we look in, in Jeremiah chapter 17, you know, I, I've thought for a long time that the way this world is, the darker and darker it gets, we're either going to have a revival or we're going to have a rapture right around the corner. Uh, I'm looking forward to any day, one or the other, and I'm fine with both. But if you're not, if you're not ready, now is the time to get ready. Amen. And there isn't a time that we don't need God. Amen. There isn't a time that we can make ourselves ready for God. Amen. There isn't a time that we can clean ourselves up. One of the favorite things that Stephen said since he's been here in the sermon is, you don't clean fish and then catch it. That's backwards. And that's also what we try to do for ourselves. We try to prepare ourselves. We try to clean ourselves up to be good enough for God. If you're doing that, if you think that, if you live that, you are making God too small. I don't know how many people I've, I've talked to and it breaks my heart to think that they're too bad for God. They're too old for God. They did this. They did that. Uh, they haven't shown the light that he gives them. Uh, it's too much. It's never too much till we breathe our last. But like I love in the book of James, it says our life is but a vapor. And, uh, you know, I used to think that was like the fog outside. But I, the more I studied, the more I learned from different pastors who said that it's like when you go outside in the wintertime. We'll have that soon that you see your breath. Well, in order to see your breath, it has to be at a certain range of temperature. And it has to have a certain amount of moisture. So you never know when you're going to have that vapor and when you're not. When it'll go away and when it'll come. So now is the time to make decisions for the rest of eternity. Jeremiah 17, verse 1. It says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond, graven upon the table of the heart, and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst the children remember their altars and their groves to the green trees upon the high hills. That's some flowery language. What that means is uh, once they allowed the evil to come in their heart, God told them not to, to be with the evil of this world. They didn't listen. He told them not to marry certain into certain uh, folks' uh, civilizations, and it did anyway. And it wasn't anything about race, skin, or anything else. It was about... Uh, people who didn't follow God, people who followed evil. And they allowed it to come in their homes, little by little. And we've done that. Uh, from the 50s, when uh, you couldn't talk about Lucy being pregnant, or when Ozzy and Harriet slept in two twin beds, to the day when there's nothing out of bounds on TV, movies, and the internet. Um, they were doing a lot worse, but yet, it's kind of relevant. Uh, they were sacrificing their children uh, through fire, and other things uh, in relationship to these gods that were evil. Uh, and they would sacrifice these children, babies, on the horns of the altar of these evil gods and these temples and these groves and the hills we're talking about. But also, back in that time, in the temple of God, 
if you was, had done something very bad and you wanted a chance to plead your case before somebody ended your life, you ran to the tabernacle and you put your hands on the horns of the altar of the tabernacle and you were able to be safe to have sanctuary until uh, someone did differently or someone didn't respect that. Now, verse 3 says this, Mow my mountain in the field. I will give thy substance and all thy treasure to the spoil. And the high places for sin throughout all the borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Now, in the verses before, we think that's horrible about uh, doing those kind of things to your babies, but they uh, allowed that uh, because the belief was that they sacrificed their own children, then they would be more financially well, uh, that they, their businesses would grow. Um, and we do that to some extent. We step aside and we don't teach our children about Christ because that's for somebody else. We step aside and we don't do the hard things when our kids are mad at us. We want to be their buddies. I want kids to love me. I want kids to talk to me. I don't like it when Father's Day comes and I don't even get a card or a call. But that doesn't matter. If my child doesn't do that and they still go to heaven, it's all worth it. Amen. I've done my job. But I, I, I so, so think about my kids and grandkids that are, are not with me. And it breaks my heart. And I would do anything to save them. And don't you worry about that baby. If you don't hear babies in the church, the church is dead. I love, I love hearing them little voices. It says here that, you know, uh, he says, even thine self shall discontinue from thine inheritance. What he's talking about is when God blesses us, he has our hand on us, and we have riches. He doesn't have to bless us if we're doing evil. I learned the hard way that. If you keep trying to help your kids and they keep straying further and further and you are helping them to do evil, you're doing wrong. That's right. You don't want them to fall. But sometimes you've got to let them fall see where they're at. Yep. And if God takes his hand off of you, he doesn't have to bless you. We do a thing called grieving the Holy Spirit. And what that means is that when we deny him the leadership of the Holy Spirit or God or Jesus, however you want to put it, and when we don't know what he wants, and we don't want to know, and we don't apply what the Bible says, and we don't rely on him, we grieve him. Yep. Now, there's people in this room that have lost people over the past, past few weeks. Uh, I was talking to somebody a few minutes ago about this. My father died when I was 11 years old. My mom died when I was 35. And even though my mom had Alzheimer's, and she didn't know me for the last three years she was alive, uh, when she, her being there, just being there, was a comfort. But when she passed away, I felt like I was flying by the seat of my pants. And what I came to realize is that a long time before I turned 35, I should have relied fully on God Amen. and not on her compass point. It's wonderful to have a, a godly mother, father, Amen. above. But it is much more important to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yep. There's nothing different. There's nothing better than that. Verse 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. And when thine heart departeth from the Lord, cursed is the man. Let's read that backwards. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that trusteth in God and maketh God his arm and whose heart stays with the Lord. That is the truth. It don't matter if it's the office. I'm not adding jot or tittle to the scripture, and I despise anybody that tries. Simply because God's word is perfect. It's inerrant. Everything in it is blessed. Yep. Not the notes, not the pictures, not somebody's opinion, not stuff I can't read anymore because I wrote in the edge and my handwriting's horrible, <laughs> but God's word is perfect. Amen. And this is simply Jeremiah saying what happened to his country. Our country has changed over the years. Uh, you go in a few days, uh, or maybe you're going to see Don now. I went to see him, and he made me wait 30, 40 minutes to get in to see him. That wasn't very nice uh, to vote this week. 
But please go vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm telling you to pray and then vote. Yep. And that's it. Uh, but our country is dark, and it has a chance to get darker, and it's only going to get lighter with the light of Jesus, and I believe that with all my heart. <coughs> Verse 8 says, For he shall be, this is the man who trusts in the Lord. Uh, verse 7, I'm sorry I skipped that. Blessed is the man who trusts the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. It doesn't say uh, easy is the life, comfortable is the life, wealthy is the life, healthy is the life, free of sadness. It says blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. You know, sometimes things don't go the way we want them to. Sometimes we don't have a timetable. We wonder why God lets us get through it. I have a lot of people in my work who are armchair quarterbacks. On the other side of whatever, they can tell you every step you took that's wrong. God already knows that step. He's already been there. He knows how you're going to react. He's going to support you. He's going to bless you, whether it's in, in uh, today, tomorrow, whenever. And maybe he puts you in a situation to teach people. He's done that with my life many times. Oh, yeah. People can come to me and tell me, well, I've done this and that. What do you think? Or my wife's doing this and that. What do you think? Or my kids are doing this and that. What do you think? And because I've been through this or that, I'm able to comfort people with what he's given me. Not my opinion. Uh, I, I was blessed to be involved with something the other night. I was talking, advising a preacher on how to move forward uh, with pastoring. And uh, the one main thing they told him was, don't tell people what your opinion is. Tell people what the word says and you'll never be wrong. Now, uh, you know, you wonder when you feel like you're floundering, when you feel like, why well, I'm in this situation. I, I planted two apple trees in my yard about 10 years ago. And this one tree, the first year I planted, there was little apples on it, and it was the prettiest tree you ever saw in your life, and it still is the prettiest tree you ever saw in your life. And this other tree had a side on it grafted in. No, I'm not going to talk about being uh, children grafted in the kingdom of God, but it immediately died on the grafted side that it was supposed to be. And uh, I didn't cut it down. I thought about it a lot, and I didn't. Uh, but the next year, that non-dead side that wasn't supposed to be what grew flourished and it has continued to flourish. But every year it just had little naughty apples that wasn't worth much, except for home for worms. And the other tree had a bunch of little naughty apples on the next year, and then nothing for eight more years. But this year, this year's different. This year on that weird tree that I still don't know what it is, uh, it had about 60 or 80 apples on a little tree about 10 foot tall. And on the other tree that's so pretty and pretty every year, it had one apple about that big around. <laughs> and I know I'm odd about things like that, but it told me that my life is like that. Maybe God put me there for that one person that, that is going to do something great tomorrow or 100 years from tomorrow. Yeah. And on the other, sometimes when we keep messing up, and maybe we don't deliver what we should do, and maybe we don't take the opportunity, maybe we don't speak in the way that we need to. I'm not talking about being intelligent. I'm talking with kindness with understanding, with helping people. But that one day, that one year that he has planned, it flourishes like no other. He taught me a couple of good lessons just from apple trees, but I'm, I'm all like that. Um, but if you listen to this verse, it says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, this is verse eight, and spreadeth her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But the leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall they cease from yielding fruit. I'm going to tell you, no matter what things look like, no matter how much heat is on, or how much the drought is in your church, in your life, in your job, in your family, he is the river that's always there. When the heat comes, the COVID, the cancer, the job loss, the home loss, grief, depression, oppression, all that turns around at the period of salvation. But I'm telling you, if you don't do this when you're saved, Christian, there is a time you need to come to to being sold out. There's a time you need to come to to being committed to what God has for you. Yes, you can be saved and not bloom, but Joey preached a, a sermon many years ago about inspecting fruit. If there's no fruit on your tree ever, people begin to wonder if you're a Christian. Yep. Does that make the difference? No. But because you're a Christian, one day that fruit's going to come out. Those leaves are going to bloom. and You'll see the blossoms of it. And maybe you don't live to see it. Maybe it's years down the road. But when you get to heaven, that's the difference. 
Charles Lee and, and the choir used to sing that song called Faces. And it was about people who went through life trying to reach people for Christ and never saw anything. And yet, when they got to heaven, there was all those faces of people they did reach. If you go on to uh, verse 9, I spent a lot of my time raising grandkids and kids, and they always ask me, why? Okay, parents, grandparents, what did you tell them? Why? Because I said so. That's why. But it's because God said so. Because his word said so. Because we can be assured in that. Um, one of the most common terms we've heard since this current president come around is fake news. There is no fake news in my Bible. There's no fake news in your Bible. That's right. God is something you can be assured of constantly. Yes. This verse is a, a familiar verse, and it's said in different ways, a couple times in the Bible. But Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, you got to figure out if you're saved and sold out or just saved. Now, that sounds odd. How you going to heaven? Yes, you are. How do you get to heaven? Well, there's a website that used to be around. No, it still is or not, but it, it helps me to remember it. It used to be called JesusPlusNothing.com. The thief on the cross didn't knock on doors. The thief on the cross didn't sell barbecue. The thief on the cross didn't take boxes to people who need them every week. The thief on the cross asked for forgiveness, and Jesus told him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Now, Stephen speaks a lot about um, real religiosity. You know, you wonder about how it is um, in churches that have been there forever, or maybe not. But how people, other people, view what you say or do, or or how you work for Jesus because of who you was or who you are or who you try to be. And yet last Sunday, sitting from where my bride is this morning, back there in the sound box, uh, I saw people put their hands up to the Lord that I'd never seen before. A part of it may have been the mic was up here singing. I, I, I don't know. They may have been saying, please stop. Yeah. Yeah. But they wasn't. It was a blessed time. Don't worry about what other people think. Worry about what God asks you to do, and will you step through that door and move on? Jeremiah had a country like ours. You know, everything had turned away from what God had, from what he remembered. I'm old enough I can remember old times, the things we used to have. Used to could. A lot of used to coulds for me anymore. I, I realize that every morning I get up, and I'm thankful every morning when I get up and put my feet on the ground. Because there's mornings I haven't been able to. Verse 10 says this. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. And even to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Why is the heart deceitful? Because when you work from emotion and not from what God says, you may love somebody a lot. I'm bad about saying I love you with all my heart. When I say it, I mean it. But if you go on emotion and people hurt your feelings or you're not feeling good that day, you're not going to go on the pure travel of what God has for you. If you rely on the word and how he leads you, you're not a robot. You're somebody that has a plan. You're somebody that has a purpose. And, and I've never been good at reading instructions. I like looking at pictures, you know, and, and I can get through it pretty good with pictures. But if I had to read instructions, it might take me a while longer. Um, I've never bought anything from Ikea, if that tells you anything. But God looks to us, and our heart is deceitful. There'll be a time when we'll do something uh, because we're made angry. We'll be do, doing something because somebody done something hateful, because somebody said something hateful, because somebody did something to somebody you love. Um, you know, if you said something as my kids were growing up to them that was hateful, I want to offend them. But grandkids are a whole different thing for some reason. Uh, I'm really going to offend them if they said something to you. It's just like. The folks in here, don't you all worry about folks in here that are on the security team, uh, that are trying to protect you? They will. Met, they have had training, and they're doing things to keep you safe. And uh, if anything that had ever come in this place, and, I, and one of us had to do something to that person at the end of their life, I don't know where I, if I was involved, I don't know where I would ever be able to get over it. 
But if one of you got hurt, it's the same thing. Amen. So, uh, the Lord is the same way. The Lord sent his only son, his only begotten son. And he sacrificed him so that we would have a way to heaven. Because without it, there's no other way. We can preach that all day, but do we believe it? Are we committed to it? Are we that committed that we would stand up in a world like this where we'll face persecution to make our lives lighter, brighter, uh, a better day, to reach people? Because hell is real, folks. Uh, I, I think about that verse all the time about uh, outer darkness and um, or utter darkness and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know about you all, but if I hear something in the dark in the night, I'm gonna flip a light on, and I'm gonna see what it is. But imagine spending an eternity like that. And then later on, when the new heaven and new earth is made, that's for the Christians. Uh, that's for people followers of Christ. But that's also when all the ones that didn't make it there go into a lake of fire. Please, please, love anybody you know enough to reach them, to do the things you need to do to keep them out of that. I like fishing as good or better as anybody in this room, but that's one lake I'm not going to visit. And I know I'm not, because I'm saved. Amen. If you're not sure about that, we can make that change today. Please yield to it. Please don't give an opportunity to the devil to win another soul. You know, you don't have to do, I don't care what Flip Wilson said, the devil can't make you do anything. Once that Holy Spirit is inside you, the devil cannot indwell you. Now, he can talk to you and tell you how horrible we are. Tell you about that mean thing you've done 30 years ago. But if it's under the blood, it's under the blood. If you ask for forgiveness, it's forgiven. You know, we can't forget anything. Uh, men, when you make a big boo-boo and forget an anniversary, a birthday, or whatever, uh, your wife may say it's fine. There's one thing I've learned in 31 plus years of marriage, it's never fine. Amen. I knew I could amen on that. All right. Next verse says, this is verse 11, it says, As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that giveth riches and not by right shall leave them in the middle of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. That's a weird verse. It took me a long time to study that. I went about that thing about 37 times. A partridge. It don't really mean partridge is one word for a bird, but it's talking about a bird that don't have any eggs of their own. And they'll go and sit on eggs for a while and run the other bird off. But they end up killing the, the chicks that are inside of those eggs because they leave it in the middle. And what it relates to is somebody who is not really following God, but steps out and hurts people's feelings, steps out and um, does things that aren't for the cause of Christ in the name of Christ, that's only for them to make them look good. Hey, what, look what I'm doing. And not going to follow through, not be committed, not stay with it to the end, till you do all you can to reach those people for Christ. And you may never see the fruit of that. But this verse says, uh, not by right, shall leave them in the midst of their days, and at his end shall be a fool. So if you think that you're serving Christ, but you can't do it with love in your heart, you can't do it allowing and teaching and respecting people enough to tell them in a nice way, hey, you know, if you could do this, I know you're trying your hearts, but if you could do this, and maybe we can work on it together and study it together in a way that doesn't destroy people. Uh, if they make a mistake and infuriate you, it's hard to keep your mouth shut. I know, Amy, amen. Uh, but it makes all the difference in somebody's lives when they're new Christians or they're new to the job they're trying to do. For you to lift them up and not try to destroy them. Uh, if you're old like me and you've lost your filter, you need to go buy a new one. They've got them down on the rocks and fast. The next verse says, A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. You know, we need a sanctuary in the, the, the you're talking about the throne of God, but we need a sanctuary in this family in that uh, the verses there in 1 Peter 3.15 talks about giving every answer as our hope for gentleness and respect. 
And also 1 Peter calls us a peculiar people showing him who called you out of darkness. So we're in the darkness. We need to be different. Uh, lots of people would say I'm peculiar. I understand that. But I'm talking about people that are different than the everyday world. People that are calling themselves Christians and take the time to love people, to talk to people. I've been amazed in the past couple of weeks at asking people that nobody talks to, how can I pray for you? It blows their mind. They don't know what to think. Now, I tried it a few years ago, just open the door, but that's not much of a witness other than being courteous. But now everybody in my plan opens the door for each other. I'm hoping to open the door for people to pray for each other. That's what I'm praying for. Despite their current religion. Despite where they came from. Despite what they do or don't understand. Amen, Monica? Amen. Amen. Okay. Monica works with kind of the same diverse group that I do. You okay, next verse says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written on the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. It's telling us again that he's the one where all goodness flows. It's telling people that if uh, they call themselves Christian, but they're not, uh, then he'll just write their name on the earth, not in the Lamb's Book of Life. And do we make mistakes? Daily. Uh, do we have times we're closer or far away from God? Absolutely. But we need to pray for each other. We need to lift each other up. We need to start with us inside that circle to make this country better, our lives better, our church better, our neighbor better. Uh, if you don't like all, any of those folks, then put some Jesus in them. It'll make a difference. Verse 14 says, Heal me, O Lord. Now, that starts Jeremiah's prayer uh, for deliverance. And, you know, I think about that uh, uh, song that we sing, uh, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, my righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly learn on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Ain't you glad I didn't sing that? The sweetest frame. I always wondered what that meant, too. So I took the time to check that out. Anything that looks beautiful, but it's not of God, though it seems sweeter, it tastes sweeter, it sounds sweeter, it feels sweet, it doesn't compare to the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Uh, I had some work done in my plant. Uh, we kept having uh, problems with uh, the railroad coming in and derailing a slight bit. It would take hours to get the locomotives back on. They didn't like coming in very much. But all this rain we've had this year has wiped things out. And they had planned on digging down two feet to fix it, to fix the problem, to get down to where it was good. But they had to dig down forward to get the solid rock because I told them I wanted a permanent fix. And the solid rock, the rock of Jesus Christ, is the permanent fix. Amen. He is what we can go to and never doubt. Amen. Never have to redo or re-get saved. Now, people doubt for salvation because the devil's good at his job. I'm not saying that. But you never have to do that a second time. Okay. He's praying in there. And he says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Now, he's, he's talking about healing. He's not talking about naming and claiming the gospel. Not, not physically, not financially. Um, but according to his will is what it was said. It was talking about it. It was talking about spiritually. If you can have a better outlook on life every day when you get up, if you can be a more peaceful person so that your wife, your husband, your whomever that you encounter during the day sees a difference in you than all the people around you, you're on the path to winning, and only God can do that. He continues the prayer in this. It says, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow. Neither have I desired the woeful death. Thou knowest the vow came out of my lips was right before me. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. You have a hope in the day of evil, and it's in Jesus Christ. That word hope don't mean I wonder if it'll happen. I would like for it to happen. Please, Lord, let it happen. That hope is what you hold on to because you know it's going to happen. No matter your situation, no matter if you're passing away, no matter if your child passes away, no matter if you lose everything you have, 
Jesus is still there and will carry you through eternity. The last verse I have here is not in, not in this section. We battle a lot in this life, especially to try to be a Christian. This verse is from 2 Chronicles, it's 2015. And he says, And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, or hearken ye all United States, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, or Randolph County, and thou King Jehoshaphat, now, I don't have one for that one, thus saith the Lord unto him, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. I love you. I appreciate you for being here. Let's sing. Today is the day we can make a difference. If your life, Christian, is not what you want it to be, if you would like to be more joyful, more uplifting for the people around you, come and do business here. We'll pray with you. If you can't put the name Christian to you, honestly, no matter how old or young you are or how long you said you're a Christian, come and do business today. Religiosity, <coughs> what other people think, keeping you out of heaven and sending you straight to hell is not a good bargain. Come and pray. Yeah.